Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, welcome to the Farm and Home Show. Again, we have visiting with us is Dr. Nicole Goche. She's our extension plant pathologist with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. So glad to have you back with us. Good to be here. Yeah, I know yesterday we had good discussion about different diseases that affect fruit, because we have a lot of people that have backyard fruits, whether it be tree fruits or just small fruits. Um, and really what we want to kind of mainly focus on today is specifically getting proper identification of that disease. Yes, yes. that's right. Or even if it is a disease. That's right. So <laughs> lots of time it's not even disease. So right. um, stress or, or herbicide damage, lots of things look like plant disease. I do. But even when it's plant disease, it's hard to identify and we don't identify from symptoms. So with plant disease, plant diseases are caused by microorganisms like fungi and bacteria that you can't see with the naked eye. So we have to go through a, a, a more tedious process for identification. So we can talk about symptoms and we have a lot of resources to talk about symptoms, but in the end, it's not quite so easy to just describe a leaf spot as a leaf spot is exactly. a leaf spot. <laughs> exactly. Well, I get phone calls um, all the time and they're describing something, but when we physically see it, that's when we know, okay, this is definitely definitely apple cedar rust or yeah. vice versa. Yeah, so, so we have our own language mm -hmm. and sometimes it's really hard, you know, your, your backyard growers and even your commercial growers sometimes don't quite know the language. So sometimes when we see it, we can put a few more of those pieces of the puzzle together. Right. It might be almost impossible to do by phone. Yeah, so how would you um, try to have, to help people with some of those questions, what would you uh, recommend? So some things that we need to know is we need to know what the cultivar is. Some cultivars are more susceptible to different things, even if it's physiological. So the cultivar, we need to know the age of the plant. Not exactly, but a newly planted fruit tree, for instance, is gonna be susceptible to very different things than one that's established. Um, any, any past problems, a little bit of the history, um, any kind of fertility, any spraying that's been going on, it, you know, in case it's herbicide drift or in case it's a toxicity. So those kinds of things, um, all of that really matters. For instance, yesterday I got a call and after a, a, what we thought was fire blight over the phone, we found out that the grower had been spraying um, an herbicide at the base of his tree and the, and the young apple tree's bark was so thin it was taking up that herbicide. So it was herbicide damage. Uh -huh. But the, the symptoms on the tips of the branches looked like fire blight. So the person I was talking to was sure it was fire blight. And we had quite a long conversation about management of fire blight. I so, bet, I bet. You so, know all there is to know about fire blight. Yes, yeah, so th those kinds of things. We need all of that information. And um, I tell a lot of growers, it feels like we're interrogating you, but I promise that we have a reason for we all of those questions. That's right, yeah, yeah. that's right. So the more information a grower can bring or a backyard grower can bring to their um, county extension agent, the, the more we understand the complexity of the problem. Yeah, and it's, it's really beneficial for us too to even have pictures. I know you've always uh, said, you know, send me pictures if you're you know, ever um, for sure of what to look for. Yeah, and I like to see a wide view as well that shows me the topography or their drainage problems. It gives us an idea. Sometimes even looking at the weeds that are on the base uh, at the bottom of a plant will give us an idea. Are these water-loving weeds? Are these weeds that typically show up when there's a drought? And all of those things put together mm -hmm. will help us. So proper identification starts with a lot of background information. It really does, it mm -hmm. really does. And we have forms available at the extension office that people can kind of jot some of those things down on if like we're out of the office. Um, right. That's very, very helpful That's as well. right. Yeah. So um, where, what other resources uh, do they have at the extension office to help with some of the proper identification? So we, we, ha we have produced a lot of resources that will show growers the most common diseases or most common insect or, or physiological problems for um, our, our primary fruit. Um, so for instance, this is our strawberry scouting guide and we'll have some of the most common um, some of the most common of the, the diseases and in insects. So this is a strawberry scouting guide. Um, we have lots of these, so we have them in different um, 
commodity specialty crops. Different specialty crops, and we have them in vegetables as well. So that's a starting point. That gives you some ideas what to look for and helps growers look a little more closely. Yeah, and these are available at the Extension Office, so if anybody has questions or would like to get one, they certainly can do that. Um, and so they are very, very helpful because everything starts to look alike after a while. That's so. right, so just ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just ask. Thank you, Nicole, for being here today. Uh, we're going to have more from her tomorrow as well, so make sure you join us tomorrow and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.